Hello and welcome to another episode in the GDScript Fundamental Tutorial Series. In this episode, we will be talking about cyclic dependencies. Now, when you're working on your game, you may have or will eventually run into an error called cyclic dependency error. Now, a cyclic dependency error, also referred to as a circular dependency, is a relation between two or more objects which either directly or indirectly depend on each other to function properly. One good way to think about this in simpler terms is that the last object references the first object, resulting in a closed loop. Here is an example of what it may look like in code. As you can see here, we have a class A gave it the name class A, and we're creating an object instance of class B. Now, on class B side, we have the class name called class B, and we've created an instance object of class A. As you can see here, this is a simple example of a circular dependency. This is what it looks like, or rather, this is what we can imagine a circular dependency to look like. As you can see here, class A depends on class B, and class B depends on class A. This is basically the compiler's version of what came first, the chicken or the egg. And to the program, it doesn't know how to solve this, resulting in an error or a crash. Now, what exactly is wrong with circular dependencies or cyclic dependencies? Well, it depends on the program programming language because some programming languages can get away with circular dependencies. So in a broader sense, a circular dependency can create high coupling within classes or modules. In the Godot application, along with other languages, you can create a crash in your program. Also, when you have multiple classes pointing together in, into a big closed loop, you can create what is called a god class. That basically means one class pointing to multiple objects and multiple objects relying on that one class. Basically, if that class fails or gets deleted or the god class is mismanaged, your entire program just destroys itself, basically causing a crash. Also, it can lead to spaghetti code as in there's no structure in your program there's no structure in your classes if class a is pointing to class b and b is pointing to c c is pointing to class d and then class d is pointing back to class a you get what's called a spaghetti code you don't know what's going on you have to look at all these different classes just to figure out what each class is doing and where to find the error in in the case of a circular dependency Spaghetti code in itself is a different problem. However, when you have classes relying on other classes, programmers tend to lead themselves down the path to spaghetti code. I just want to throw this quickly to fix spaghetti code. Simply don't create a chain of classes that rely on each other, even if you don't end up with a circular dependency. For example, if class A relies on B and B relies on C and C relies on D and D doesn't rely on anything, you technically don't have a circular dependency error with that chain you've just created. But that in itself, the fact that you created the chain is a problem and most likely needs to be refactored. I just want to throw that out there out of scope for the topic of this video. But to solve spaghetti code, simply refactor your code so, so you don't have to depend on other classes in such a chain maybe have one class depend on everything anyway moving on lucky for us the Godot application can detect circular dependencies before you run your game application this is good as Godot will actually catch these issues for you before you even press the play button so as long as you see that error being thrown in your Godot application at least you know now what to look for another cool thing in Godot is that even if you do have a circular dependency, you will not throw an error when you run your game if you don't reference the script that contains the circular dependency in your main scene file. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. As you can see here, our game will work because our scene script does not call out or load a class from class A or class B. So even though class A and class B have their class name in the global scope, as long as we don't call those classes in our scene script, we will not throw an error when we run the game. However, you will break your game if you end up calling either class A or class B. It doesn't matter which class you load, but if you load one of them, you're going to enter this chain and you your game will crash. Now, the question is, how do you go exactly into fixing circular dependencies? That's a tough question. 
because it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. For example, the best way to avoid a circular dependency is to decouple your code. So remember the example of class A referencing class B, class B referencing class C, and then class C referencing A, creating that circular dependency. Well, what you want to do is find a way to make sure that all three classes don't rely on each other. In our example, we use two scripts. So the question is, do you need two scripts that point to each other, that reference each other? Can you do the job with just a single script? So for example, we have our circular dependency again. Class A depends on class B. Class B depends on class A. First fix is obviously combining the functionality of class A and class B. So that way they are not referencing each other. Depending on what you're trying to accomplish, this is one solution. So in this example, even though our code grew big, sometimes growing your script is a good thing because it solves one issue but again it depends on what you're trying to accomplish however what if this isn't what you want what if you do need two scripts separated for your game to function the way you want to well there is a second solution that is to create a third class so what you do is you create a third class and the third class will create instances of the two classes that need each other. So for example, class A needs class B, class B needs class A. We don't know what they need, but they need something from each other, either a function call or a variable. Well, instead of having these two point to each other, you have a third class pointing to each one. So as you can see here, class C has created a class object of class A and class B. And so therefore, not only do we have access to the functions inside of A and B, we also have access to member variables that may be inside A and B. And now inside of class C, we can do what we need to do, sort of like a middleman between class A and class B. And this is another way to try to fix your circular dependency in code. Again, it is difficult to give a solution to circular dependencies because normally when you do get a circular dependency, it's because you really need functionality to work between two different scripts. And without knowing what the exact goal is again, it is difficult to give a solution. However, these are two basic solutions nonetheless that can help you on your programming journey. Well, that's all I have for you in this episode. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for clicking the like button. There is no GitHub repository to show solutions to circular dependencies. However, I will be uploading a basic project that creates a circular dependency for you so you can see in code how that's done. Thank you for joining me in this episode. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have an amazing day.